I'm sitting here so excited. When today's guest slid into our DMs in July of 2018, I had to blink my eyes a few times. Not only is our guest someone I've felt like I've known forever, thanks to her Emmy award-winning role as Lauren Fenmore on CBS's The Young and the Restless, but also because I followed her on Instagram and already knew that she was a sister. (laughs) I mean, come on, this animal activist, vegan mama who uses her platform to support rescue as well as women-owned small businesses all in between flying back and forth to LA for work while running her horse ranch in Nashville. (laughs) Still, somehow had time to step up to foster a pregnant, totally unsocialized (laughs) chihuahua sprung from the depths of a downtown LA RV hoarding situation in the mid of a global pandemic. <laughs> like, like, that was not <laughs> you know, That was so three years ago. So yeah, three years ago. ago. <laughs> Welcome Tracy Bregman and Ivy Rose to a podcast. Thank you. Yay. Welcome. So happy to be here with Hi, you Ivy. girls. I'm so happy we can make this work. I know, right? Uh, Took a little bit. Sorry about that. No, I mean, listen, we feel very honored to have you here. We know that, you know, you're, you're only here for a certain amount of time, and then you're back at the ranch. With, with all the animals. With all the animals, so thank you very much. Absolutely, and because of you, I didn't realize I needed a chihuahua in my life, and now I don't know what I would do without her. <laughs> that happened to me too. Oh yeah. <laughs> I didn't know I needed chihuahuas until I started rescuing, and I said, oh wait, now I actually can't live without chihuahuas. Right? And someone once said this to me, they said, chihuahuas are like chips, you can't have just one. I'm so going to I... cut myself off, because oh, I only need one. one, because I can't travel with more than one. Okay, that's fair. And she is the queen, and we're she not is, gonna disrupt the queen. She is the queen. Yeah, she, <laughs> I see that about her. I, I she adjusted to this kind of life very fast. <laughs> yeah. So in 2020, the midst of a pandemic, we were notified about this hoarding situation in downtown LA. And out of that hoarding situation came 22 dogs in the back of our truck. Four of them were pregnant, her name was Lucy then. Right. Ended up being one of them who you offered to foster. And I remember the day so clearly. It was a early, very early morning text or phone call. You're like, I have to work today and I really think that she's in labor. What are we gonna do? Right, Uh, so during the pandemic, just to go back, um, I would, our show was the first one really to go back. It was uh, Bold and Beautiful and Young and Restless were the first two shows in the entertainment business to go back. And we were all so nervous. And I was also living with my uh, 91-year-old mother at the same time in Nashville at the farm. And so I was so concerned about traveling and being exposed and then bringing it back to my mother. And those were very, very scary days. Mm -hmm. And so I would spend a lot of time in Los Angeles. So I I tried not to fly as much. And I flew looking like I was working for NASA. (laughs) And when I saw the story, about the chihuahuas and I knew I was going to be in town for six weeks. I said, what can I do? Can, do you want yep. me to foster one? Because also selfishly, all my animals were in Nashville. And I thought, ah, oh, I, I have a space. I, I would love to help if I can. And of course, never thought I'd ever fall in love. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Obviously, I don't know myself well enough. Right. Right. And, um, and then I saw the story and- uh, Yeah. You said, oh, I've got I've got a pregnant one for you. <laughs> well, yeah, because two of them were at my house initially, uh-huh. very pregnant. One of them, her, I guess we think it was her sister, her litter mate, actually went into labor in my son's bed. But they were so weak from being malnourished that her sister could not push out her puppies. So she was tanking and the puppies were tanking in my son's bed and I called our vet and I was like, "Uh, I think we have a situation here and it was like 10 p.m. at night, headed out to uh, Rachel and Karen and immediate C-section. So we knew with her when she went to you for foster, that, that early morning text was the right thing because then 
Well, I have other questions first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go back to yeah. you choosing to foster this dog. Not only was she coming from a hoarding situation, she was unsocialized. She perhaps had never seen the light of day. She was also pregnant. She was also malnourished. What made you say, I can take this on? Well, I didn't realize she was kind of had like a vicious quality. <laughs> some may call it vicious, yes. some call it sassy. Yeah. It was a little bit more than sass. Okay. <laughs> because I worked with the Lang Foundation for many, many years and I would help socialize animals. I brought my young son. He was, I think Austin was in second grade. We would go at least once a week and we would help them figure out which dogs were great around kids and all of that. Uh -huh. So I had that experience. Plus I've always had animals my whole life. And then this this lovely lady came into my apartment and growled at me. And I've never had a dog <laughs> growl ever. And I was like, huh, okay. You're the one. And um, <laughs> I fed her. She would eat. Um, we set up her crate. Everything was set up, but she crouched into a corner. And I would give her time, like an hour. I'd go back. She would growl. By the second hour, I was like, you know what? She's growling, but she's not striking. Right. So I just went over and picked her up. Yep. I remember that moment. That was it. Yep. Oh. Done. Yeah. She was fine. Oh, okay. And and she bonded so deeply with me at that moment. I've never seen anything like it. That when she did have her puppies, I remember her always wanting to be on my lap to make me remember and to make me feel confident that she was still my baby even though wow. she had babies. It was wow. so interesting. Wow, she had a tough exterior. Tough. But once you and got through that, my goodness. Well, I got through that. Oh. <laughs> it was rough going for a long time to the point where my kids were saying, you cannot keep this dog. And I said, I have to keep this dog because if I don't keep this dog, no one's going to adopt her. <laughs> God, that's how bad she was. And that's how it happened. And it took a year and a half, a year and a half. And my kids love her. She worships my sons, Aww. loves my mom. Like they can interact with her now? Oh, now she's phenomenal Oh, with anyone. I mean, I would say the, the turning point was at a year and a half and then two and a half years. It really took time. It really took time. And you were committed to her regardless of if she was gonna make that transition or not. So that must Correct. have been a surprise to your family that she was like, actually, we're all we're all good. We're in it together. Well, you have to understand, I had golden retrievers. And then <laughs> this is a this. different vibe. <laughs> yeah. And everybody was like, what are you thinking? <laughs> what are you thinking? You know, golden retrievers, Love well, everybody. Uh, everyone, yes. yeah. you know, they're amazing. And so everyone was a little taken off guard. Sure, that but makes sense. it was because of our connection that I felt, well, that's really, as long as we've got the connection, I'm good. Yeah. Wow. And then it took her a while and now everyone loves her. Oh, yeah. She's hard not to love. Yeah. <laughs> And as you saw, she ran right to you, totally. with tail wagging. She and, came yeah. up the stairs. Like there was not one second of like, I'm scared what's going on. She right. was very confident amazing. and happy. And she probably, at that point, she didn't know who I was really until she could smell me. So right. I'm very impressed. I'm impressed it, too. <laughs> she's a sweetheart. She really is. But that's also a true testament to you because any other foster slash potential adopter who has you know, a dog with issues, behavior issues like that, and with good reason would be like, listen, I can't do this, understandably. And I would understand. Yes, right. totally. I would understand, but I felt so badly for her background and what she came from and what she must have experienced. Mm -hmm. And to not for two years, even have your feet on the grass or know what it is to be outside. Yeah. There was some trauma to, to a lot of trauma work through mm -hmm. there for sure. She wow. seems to have worked through it pretty well <laughs> She's though. Doing fine. And she lives on a ranch. So, okay. Now that we have all of that background, we can cut uh -huh. to Miss Ivy Rose is, um, in my car because you have to work all day. You know that she is 
in labor and all of the dogs who were pregnant went into labor within two weeks of each other. Right. We had the experience that they were not strong enough to do this alone. So when she was in labor, we said, we got to bring her to the vet. The vet that we like is about an hour away. And I put Ivy Rose in my car in a little crate so she didn't tumble all around. And I would just keep looking in my rear view <laughs> mirror to be like, is she okay? Is she okay? Cause she's like panting, she's circling. And then I look at my rear view mirror and this one dog is now two dogs. <laughs> and I'm like, this dog is giving birth in uh -huh. my car. Oh my goodness. But I also know these dogs can't push these babies out on their own. I still have 30 miles oh, to go. My gosh. And I'm like, I call Ellen. I said, I don't know if the baby is alive or dead. I don't know if the other babies are going to come out or if they're going to be alive or dead. Like, You're what like, am should I, I doing? should I keep going or should I stop? What but, do I do? Yeah, we had to, we, had, we kept going. Yeah. We got her to the vet and they got her settled in and this this girl gave birth to all of her babies. Yeah, she did. Naturally. Naturally. Yeah. Unfortunately, one did not make it. Didn't right. make it. She was in heaven before she joined mm -hmm. this world, but she Ivy was awesome. You did a good job, girl. You did. Yeah. And then they all came to live with me. Yep. <laughs> they all came to live with you. How long did they live in your house for? They lived with me for four weeks. Okay. And then Ellen took them we, because I had to go back. We share. We share right. to Nashville for a month. You co-parented. Yes, right, exactly. Co and, you know, I needed to make sure that my mom had lost a dog. I had a Maltese that w Ooh. is old and adorable and wonderful and rescued. And I wanted to make sure, did my mom want to take that dog? Because she was so connected sure. to her dog. And I didn't want her to be with without a companion. Because for me, especially during the, you know, pandemic, I thought my, that dog that she had got my mother out every single day mm -hmm. and, totally. and gave her something to do every single day. And they had a beautiful connection. Mm -hmm. So I, I, before I took Ivy back, I, I wanted to make sure that my mom wanted, you know, Hazel yes. as her companion. So she said, yes, she did. And then I was free to have Ivy. Your, your co-pilot. Which would have been hard. Pick. I mean, it was, I never stopped thinking about her and I brought her back and then my golden retriever passed away. Mm. And I think I thought to myself, I, I don't know how I would have gotten through that without her. Wow. It you was were, divine timing. You helped your mommy. Yeah. You helped your mommy. Your mommy helped you, yes. and then you helped your mommy. Yes. Wait a second. She's moving closer to you, but I want her to <laughs> move closer to me. Maybe she'll make her round. Yes, yeah, she will. Okay. It's not your moment. It's okay. mine. Okay. <laughs> yes. How did the Rescue Ranch come about for you, and why Nashville? Well, I was originally um, asked to go to look at a business deal a friend of mine had a, a airbnb called the sugar shack Cute. and she called me and said oh the property in front of mine in nashville uh just came up for sale wouldn't it be great if we own the whole property together yes it would it would <laughs> so i got on the next plane went to go see her and i have several friends like lifelong friends that live in Nashville, but I've never really been. I I hosted the uh, CBS Thanksgiving Day Parade there, and I saw the airport. Yeah. I saw the Grand Old Opry, and I saw the airport, and that was it. <laughs> There's a lot more to Nashville, it turns out. There is, it turns out. <laughs> and then my uh, older son, Austin's, one of his best friends, uh, lives in Nashville. So he would go every summer uh, for a week to stay with them at their house, and I, his parents, were people that my ex-husband and I used to travel with. And we never went to Nashville. It was very bizarre. Huh. So here I am looking at this deal and I thought I wanted to do an Airbnb in a place that I would want to visit, hmm. um, but I wouldn't live there all the time. Right. So I thought, and I looked at the property and I didn't like the property and magic here and you can feel it. You can feel it. Oh, I just got and chills. It was just <laughs> everything I always wanted. And when my younger son, Landon, was born, I had an artist paint the ranch that I saw in my head, the dream that I always had of the ranch. Yeah. And basically through time, that's really what I created. Wow. And um, a few things happened. I ended up finding a smaller ranch that I wanted as my Airbnb. So I closed escrow September, 2018 on that, which is called Black Horse Ranch 
after standing ovation, my Aww. big Frisian. And um, two months later, the Woolsey fire happened and I lost my house in Malibu completely. And that was my only house. So uh. I kept going to furnish it. And that's where my kids and I spent Thanksgiving that year. And um, I just started every time I went, I met more people and more connections. And then I thought, Years after that, you know, a couple of years after that, maybe I would make my main residence in Nashville and travel back and forth. Wow. And the kids and I absolutely love it. Uh, right the farm. Oh, tell us about him. And oh. I'm sorry, by the oh, way. Thank you. Thank I, you. I, yeah. When it happened, I, I just. It was rough. It yeah. was really rough. Uh, but he was 24. And um, I really got two extra years out of him that I never thought I would. He had really, really bad uh, hocks mm -hmm. in, the, in the back uh, legs. And that's bad knees where he couldn't get up anymore. So we would need to lift him with the tractor, which we did for two years. I had a vet tell me he needed to be put down two years before. Uh, but I didn't. I did everything I possibly could because in between the times that he went down, Oh my God, he was the king of the ranch. And he had a girlfriend and he just, he couldn't be in a stall anymore. So he roamed 16 acres and just had the oh, best life. Oh, right. And if you saw him in between these times of going down, there's no way you could have put him down. Mm -hmm. Literally no way. I said, how do I do that? Mm -hmm. And I have a remarkable, remarkable vet who owns Tennessee Equine in Nashville, Dr. Monty. And he said, whatever decision you make is the right decision. And what everyone said to me though is too soon's better than too late. And I would, and it was a hard balance because it gets icy and freezing there. And if he fell on ice in the middle of the night, that's not the way you want your horse to go no down. Way. No. And so every single day I had my phone on every night hoping that I wasn't going to get a phone call, you know, and it was scary. But the last time he went down, they got him up with the tractor, which shockingly, he never hurt his innards ever in two years, except that last time and his lower intestine. Yeah. Got it. Oh, so gosh. it was a rough one. I was with him till the last minute. And uh, I'm just so grateful that I had 10 years with one of the most magnificent souls Seriously. ever to hit the planet. How did he join you? Uh, I actually, I rode from the time I was seven years old and my older son, Austin came into this world with a love of horses and a knowledge that comes from another life. It just does. I, I mean, you, if you want confirmation of that, my son was that wow. as a child. He wanted to do dressage from the time he was two and three. I was like, dressage? I don't know what dressage is. You know, what is dressage? It's a, an Olympic sport and it's like a horse dance, but it's very, very difficult. Your kid just wanted to do that. Yes, which is okay. not, you know, and I came from the hunter jumper world where I was like, is that the thing with the mirror? What is that? <laughs> and finally, when he was 11, I said, okay, let's go back to where I where I rode, which strangely enough was Mill Creek in Topanga, oh. right where we are, right here. So when oh, I came to this country, cool. when I was 10, that's where I started riding. And I took him back there and we all started riding. And I had a beautiful young trainer named Amanda. And um, unfortunately she was killed <gasps> training a young horse. Oh my gosh. And I sold everything. And I said, Austin, I'm never getting on a horse again. That's oh. it. We're done. I didn't oh go gosh. near a horse for 14 years. And he was coming home from college and he said, you know, I've always wanted to do dressage and I've always wanted to do it with you. He's the only person who could have got, got me, got me to horse. do that. And he said, it's time to get over Amanda. And I was like, I don't think I could Aww. ever get over Amanda. But first month, every time I got in the saddle, I just prayed and talked to her. And uh, it took me about a month to be able to ride. I still don't ride the way I used to. I'm not an aggressive rider anymore. Mm -hmm. I wear an airbag. Um, and six months later, my trainer, who we ended up working with, uh, Tony McClure, who's now a dear friend, uh, said, oh, I'm going to look at a horse. Yeah. 
<laughs> do you want to go? And she, she said, said you want yeah, to yeah. Go. And she sent me the picture. And you know the thing in my chest that I told you when I yes. saw Leaper's Fork? That's what I saw when I saw that picture. And I went, oh no. And I drove out and I saw him from afar and he oh. took my breath away. Wow. He literally took my breath away. Wow. And that was it. That's the last thing I remember. Was that the horse your trainer wanted? Yeah, standing oh, no. and and I and I've and I've wanted a, a a black horse, which I have a huge picture of a black horse in my dressing room, that looks just like him, and I always wanted a horse named Standing Ovation. Um, wow, you're a manifester. You really are. <laughs> I got to do this for other stuff too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. To work on it. Did so you then, manifest this little Chihuahua? I, no, you guys did. Oh. <laughs> no, we manifested you. Yeah. 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 Go. And then I ended up with her. Yeah. But so on a theme, I have standing ovation or had standing ovation. And then I have three rescue um, therapy ponies named Emmy, Oscar, and Tony. Oh, And a excellent. quarter horse named Brando. <laughs> you know, it all, it all goes. It all goes. Emmy and Pickles. Oscar. I have Pickles and Zorro. Zorro because Zorro was the series that my mother did. And he looks like I took standing ovation, Ovi, and shrunk him. He, he's the most magnificent, perfectly proportioned mini horse you've ever seen. Now he's sassy, but cute. Oh, I love sass. I, I do make them cuter. Yes, absolutely. So there was a point where you said, I have this property and I'm going to fill it with these animals or you were, you had the animals and you were looking for the property. It's one of those things that if you build it, they will come. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, and the story in my head was with all the minis was, uh, so I had a friend who owned this rescue who called me and said, we got shut down. We need these three minis to have a home immediately. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, all my friends wanted minis. And then after I got that call, I got another call from another rescue saying, we just rescued three minis from the slaughterhouse steps. Can you take them in? And I was like, I, I, I mean, I could, but I, I said, just get them safe. Just get all the horses safe. Right. We'll figure it out. And yeah. we figured it out, didn't yeah. we? Well, <laughs> so in my defense, one of my boarders took one of the minis, okay. but he One stayed. out of six? So, well, yes, but okay. then later, <laughs> another friend of mine, another friend of mine uh, took one. And so I have four. Okay. But it's interesting. I just got a call. The rescue is uh, going back into business. <gasps> if you say, not business, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they are going back into service. Oh, that's amazing. So oh, I think so in the spring, yeah. Well, that and they're going to go into the schools and they're going to go back into the hospitals, which is what they were trained to do. <gasps> oh, and amazing. they're the cutest things of all time. Oh my gosh. Oh, you, you just take like a little uh, blanket into their pasture and lie down and they'll lie down and kiss you all over your face. They're the, I mean, we're where coming do we in make Nashville. an appointment? <laughs> I, I'm telling you, part, so much of my ranch, I, I call it like a mental health day. Totally. Because it can completely change everything just being with them. Yeah. And that's so important because you come from LA and when you leave LA, you probably do need a bit of a mental health day. <laughs> You drive, I call my driveway my peace. Oh. I did a whole, on my Instagram, a whole thing about my driveway, which I thought, well, people are going to think I'm insane, but <laughs> wouldn't be the first time, but there's just something about the driveway. And I just, everything just goes, oh, probably because I see all the horses. Yeah, probably but it happened animals. to you from the first time you drove up that driveway. There's something about it. Wow. Mm -hmm. Very about intuitive. It. You're very spiritual and very intuitive. Well, Nashville was when I started to listen to my gut and go with it. No matter how crazy it seemed, whatever I felt is the direction I went. And that I think every time that I didn't listen to my instinct is when I went, boy, I should have listened. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why it took me this many years, but it did. And it took Nashville. And it, and it took that. It was like always circulating around you, but you just never. I never got the memo. Went, you never got the memo. <laughs> I never got it. Wow. Pretty cool. Before Nashville though, there was Malibu. There was Malibu. Tell Where? us about that experience with the Woolsey fire. Yeah, I never thought I'd live anywhere else, but there. 
And I sound like the voice of doom. Do I sound like the voice yeah, of doom? I mean, you've had some, some, stuff that you've had had some, some stuff. shit happen yeah. to you. Yeah. And I'm not 20. <laughs> <laughs> You're not? Over years. Dang it. No. Um, yeah, that was quite something. But again, in following my instinct, I happened to be staying at my son's apartment in Beverly Hills. And at 1.45 in the morning, fire wasn't anywhere near my house. I was awakened by voice in my head saying, get up and go get your animals. Oh my God, you had animals there. But I, let's put a pin in that. The week before, I was sitting on standing ovation in the arena and I turned to my trainer and I said, I have a bad feeling. We have to move all the horses and not next week. So that was a Saturday. My house burned down the following week. If I had waited the week, the you fire went straight through where I was yeah. sitting. And she knew because of my woo-woo instincts yeah. um, to listen to me, which was unbelievable. I handed hand it to her and we moved five horses that afternoon. Oh my gosh. The week before the fire came. Mm -hmm. And had you, ha I remember those photos so vividly of the fire when all of those animals ran towards the ocean. Oh my God. Is that the wildest I mean, that, shot? That yeah. was the wildest shot. Right. That, and the could have been your animals. Right. And so 1.45 in the morning, I would never drive from Beverly Hills to Malibu at 1.45 a.m. We don't do PCH up. No, we don't. Never. Uh -uh. <laughs> no. And I did. And I went and got all my animals, got in the car. And by the time I got back to the city, there was an evacuation. Oh I would not gosh. have been able to get no back way. in. No way. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And the house was gone the next day. Oh my gosh. November 9th, my mother's birthday. Oh, yeah. oh, wow. And my neighbor took the last photo of my house because he stayed. I don't even know how he did, but he did. Oh, my god! And gosh. his house? His, his house made it. Wow. Um, it. It's just fire is a fascinating thing. It, it sort of plucks. Right. Because it's not like it, the house next to me was fine. Right. The house behind was, you know, the and then it crossed the street and got my friend's houses. Really wild. Yeah. It was... Uh, not my favorite thing that's ever happened, I'll tell you that. No. You no. know, it's very interesting to have your history erased. Like yes. everything. Yes, like I can everything. imagine that would be yeah. really hard to grapple with. Right. I wish my instinct had said, hey, pack a bag. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, but, then people yeah. would have been like, she's crazy. <laughs> yeah, she's, <laughs> but she's preparing I got, for something right. really dark. I got, I got the animals out. Got and the animals out. Listen, at the end of the day, everything living was fine. Thank God. Thank God. In pretty much the entire fire, there yeah. were two people that perished in their driveway because they did not evacuate, I believe. If I have the story wrong, I'm sorry. But for what happened and the destruction that happened, it's pretty extraordinary. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. And you had kind of prepared your life to be okay in that moment. You had your other home in Nashville. Your animals were out. Like it... It's it was a very so, interesting, really magical mm -hmm. series of events. And I remember you saying that from your Malibu home, you 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 had a big, huge Buddha on the property mm -hmm. that made it, and that made it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you gifted it to a friend, I think. I did a castmate. Yeah. And um, I said, she said I'd like to buy it, and I said, I'll tell you what, I'll give it to you if you make a donation to deity. Oh. <laughs> And full she did. We've had all kinds of full circle We have stuff. had a lot of full, mm -hmm. full circles. Yes. And the Woolsey Fire was one of them because we Deity Animal Rescue was a donation drop-off for the Woolsey Fire. And though I think we had connected right before that, I feel like that was a moment that really connected all of our lives. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because then sure. you DM'd not too long after that, I think. so. Probably. I'm trying to remember... You you have a better memory of this than no, we I'll just have to looked, scroll back. We looked up the yeah, DM. Yeah, that's what we did. We right, you back. wrote it, yeah. <laughs> we, have, we have the history. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then, yeah, you and I kind of just hit it off. Yeah, exactly. And did our tea in the afternoon exactly. stuff. And yeah, it's been wonderful. Mm -hmm. Totally, totally great. Yeah. I'm so glad to have met you guys. I know. I mean, and it's just like, it's the the things that have happened since then too, we won't get into, but like there's, <laughs> there's definitely, you definitely have that like 
intuition, like magical woohoo stuff that <laughs> has worked for us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning it. Yeah. I feel like you both have it. I have never, I think that I haven't found my Nashville yet, the place that brings it out in me, but I do see it in both of you and a lot of people in your life. So I'm trying to tap into that woo woo. Yes. <laughs> It's a good thing. It is a good thing. It seems like it. I mean, it's brought you some pretty amazing things. Well, and you have to, it's, I hate to say you have to do anything, but trust. You have to trust it when you hear it, mm. even though you'll mm. second guess it. Right. And what? Like, what a weird thought. Right. So you just have to trust it and try it. See, yeah. and I think for you, my beautiful work wife, I think that's the disconnect for you is like, okay, you like can sit with people like us and see it and get it that it's like there and it's a real thing. But then when it might be happening to you, I think that you're like, you poo poo it. Yeah. Like, nah. Yeah. So I just maybe right. Right. next step is to just test it out. It test it out. Okay. See. Well, it turns out I do struggle with a control issue and I think that I have to let that go to let that in. Yeah. Well, you don't have to let it all go. Cause I think that's, that sounds overwhelming. Try to dip your toe in. There you go. 2024. Dip a toe. Here comes my <laughs> woo woo. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Great. One of the other things that I love about you and I love following you for, and this was actually before I even knew you, you have always been such a supportive sister, meaning you have your friends, you have the the women that you work with, the, the shops that you shop at, the people that you believe in, and you go to the plate for them really on a daily basis, just in support and the things that you do. One of the Thank first you. things that you and I did together was had designed a clutch for the proceeds to go to animal rescues. Right. And we were doing a red carpet thing for a movie and you said, here, wear this. And you gave me this beautiful, That's like so I, cool. it was had so that, cool. Um, the knuckle, right. yes. the finger right. exactly. holes on the top. Oh, I just love it. It was so I cool and edgy, like so much cooler and edgier that I, it, it made my, it made my total outfit. But that, that first line that we did benefited you guys. And it's called our animal foundation, Don Ann Billings Ritter, who owns Moo Country yes. in uh, Montana and Leapers Fork, Nashville. We have this foundation called World Paws, P-A-W-Z. And the fun thing is, is we get to do a curated line. Usually every quarter, we do some sort of product of some kind. Our logo is a feather with a paw print in it. And we love to give to rescues around the world. And you were our first. I thank you so much for that. Yes, that was amazing. There's pictures of me, A, on a red carpet, <laughs> at a step and repeat, and B, with this amazing handbag completing my outfit. And uh, my dear friend Donna Dierico wore it as well on the Last Chance for Animals red carpet. Oh, amazing. So that was lovely too. That's yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you, are you a designer? Is this a newer thing? Have you always done design work. Your jacket, by the way, is amazing. Thank you, hip chick. Thank you, Andrea, <laughs> for putting butterflies on the front of my jacket as well as the back. <laughs> yep. And on the back, it says Malibu, One, yep, one love. love Malibu. One Love Malibu. This jacket came for the uh, benefit of the Woolsey fire victims. Wow. Absolutely. And I'm very supportive of small business. I think it is vitally important to every town, every city to have small business, not just these big malls, which are, are great too and serve their purpose. But I love to be supportive of new business, small business, specifically women owned businesses. Mm -hmm. I think it's important. How did that come about? I mean, not only the women owned business, but the animal support for mm -hmm. you. I'm trying to think, I just have always been about animals. From, you know, I was the one rescuing the birds at, while I was riding and uh, always had dogs. My my uh, mom is an animal lover as well. My mom is an animal whisperer. Oh. Amazing. Okay, so you grew up with a very intimate relationship with animals in a way that you just like always. really got them. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. I, I don't remember my life without an animal. Mm. In fact, I think I was named after the beagle. <laughs> 
Casey. Oh. When I was born in Munich, Germany. Wow. Yes. I, I really think I was second. <laughs> right? I mean, second's not that bad. It's not that bad. And I'll, I'll come second to a beagle any day. But yeah. Um, yeah, so I always, always had animals, always had hamsters, uh, always. What was your first pet? Casey. And then Fluffy, the, the poodle. Um, and then Buffy Duffy Tinkerbell, which was from a same situation Names. where yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I believe this was all my fault. Um, but my first dog when I moved out, um, was a Wheaton Terrier named Bagel. Oh my gosh. I have to have a dog named Bagel. <laughs> Isn't that a great I name? Love I love that. <laughs> yes. So Bagel and I were bachelors together. Oh, and he was amazing. Oh, you guys hit the town together? He was amazing. He was great. And back in those days, you could actually bring animals to the studio and he would come and he was great. Oh, he was a set dog. Yes. And then and then started my golden retrievers. So I was uh, one of my directors, Randy Robbins from the show, had two golden retrievers that had puppies. And that was my first uh, family dog. And Austin, who was two at the time, we watched Stella being born. Oh, and we saw her every single week till we could bring her home, and she was amazing. So my my kids are, I'm sure you can understand, are major major animal lovers. Yes, yes. So Landon is very connected to do the donkey <laughs> pickles, and Austin <laughs> and and I are, are all horses. about horses. <laughs> yeah. So funny. That was the other instinct. I, for some reason, with the name, I should have named her like Birdie or something because she's so. Ivy like Rose a, is but, very sophisticated. Yeah. I don't know. I heard <laughs> it's a vine and a flower. I'm like, all right. Then I kept going down the names and I said Ivy and she turned her head. And, except not now. Ivy. Yeah. Oh, not the, No, not, not at this not, moment. Not, not she's this moment. busy. Yeah. She's like, oh, this is so exhausting. I think I'm going to take a little nap. You Aww. can take a nap over here on my lap. Do you want to go to Lindsay? Oh, <laughs> do you want to go to Lindsay? Go on. Go we on, might make it through this whole pod without one kiss. Oh, no. All right. She said, but you were never my mommy ever. She gave birth, birth in my car. I, mean, I just gave birth in your car. I just feel like I deserve a little cuddle. <laughs> Do you want a little cuddle? Yeah. She doesn't want to. It's okay. Do you want a little cuddle? Go ahead, sweetheart. Okay, oh. well, sorry. Don't take it personally. I I will try. Okay, to. I, I, don't take it personally. <laughs> She's a mama's girl. I so a lot in line with your adv advocacy work, uh -huh. I feel like you are also always trying to add to your cast members' families as well with your rescue oh, passions. Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm always uh, trying to get people to adopt dogs. And you know what? A lot of them do. That's amazing. And they're really amazing. I've, I've wanted uh, my TV husband to adopt. I got him this close, as you know. Yes. Yes. But he had um, a health challenge. Yes. And so he's just finished with that, I'm happy to report. Yay. And he's doing great. Well, does he want a puppy? Well, the question. <laughs> I'm having dinner with him in a couple of days. Well, we have a puppy. He might we have a puppy. We can just. Oh, wait a minute. Which we puppy? We have a few. Um, well, their mommy was the is this fluffy like Pekingese Chihuahua girl. Oh, because that's Josie. What, yeah, that they have um, two dogs in New Orleans that are very similar to that. Okay, well, um, she's like a little butterfly. Mm -hmm. This dog. Her babies. We're not too sure. We know what you know their mama is, but we have no idea what daddy is. So they look like toasted marshmallows. They do. Oh my They're goodness. They're so precious. I fluffs. Yeah. I'll send you. It's worth it. Yes. Oh, yes. My goodness. Where are they? Carla, our Carla. fosters. Oh, okay. In Near LAX. LAX. She's so amazing. And she's oh, so my amazing. goodness. I feel like I'm shrinking. Am I going? <laughs> I think I'm going either. There's I, a I lot think of yeah, that's so no, right. a you're there's a, crease. A, there's a hole you're here. You're going down. <laughs> I'm like, you're being swallowed. Oh, my God. Am I shrinking <laughs> on this podcast? <laughs> you look at Ivy. She's like holding Thank on to her dear yeah. life. Like, Mom. <laughs> Is your tush falling in the hole? Yeah. Wouldn't be the first. There we go. <laughs> Won't be the last after. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Yes, so I, that was funny. You texted me or you called me and you were with Christian at the time. And you're like, um, or, you have a pup, you have puppies, don't you? Don't you remember on the talk? Yes, and, and then you went on the, the talk, they yes. They put up that darling puppies yeah. picture. Yeah. And he said, you should have just brought it. And I, I just was so afraid. With an animal, 
as we yes, all know, of course, it it's not just that first look. It's you know, hope if you're lucky, 15, 20 years totally. of commitment. Absolutely, that commitment is so important, and I'm so glad that you said that because yes. puppies, as darling as they are, when you see them, like yeah. they do grow up, and exactly. they'll still be beautiful, and they'll still be darling. Exactly. But maybe they're not going to be toasted marshmallows forever. Right. No. Exactly. And you know, I've had animals with health issues and. And it's a commitment. And a challenge. It's a family I mean, member. Ivy Rose, she did not join the family as a willing participant. Not for a while. Not for a while. Mm -hmm. And you didn't know she ever would be. No, I didn't. So I always, I, I think when it comes to a, a living being, that's not a good surprise. Totally. I totally agree with you. <laughs> totally. It has to be a commitment. Yes. Yes. Upfront. Well, when he's ready. Yes. He I knows we're him. here. Yes, yes, exactly. I have to see these toasted marshmallows. Oh my gosh. <laughs> They're so cute. So fluffy and so cute. And then there's two other little chihuahua. Actually, her color mm -hmm. at Carla's house too. Oh. Twig and Bitsy. They, um, Twig and Bitsy. Know, so cute. So they cute. are very cute as well. Hi, Aw, darling. Hi. Yeah. I, I, you know, uh, I have a, a homeopath who's all about chihuahuas. And honestly, I, in the beginning, I was like, I, I don't understand that, but all right. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. They're really? the best. Yeah. I well, what does no your idea. homeopath say about chihuahuas? Loves. Well, she has three of them, you know, and uh, she had just told, you know, I think for me, I'm because I came from the golden retriever mm -hmm. era of loving everybody and not quite being so protective, like they would have licked some, you know, a robber to death. Mm -hmm. if they, <laughs> where this one, so I, as you know, I have an Anatolian shepherd as well that you helped me with. And uh, when these two come to the front door, when anybody comes to the house no and they're barking, no first of all, no entering. one's entering. And they all look at Ella, the Anatolian. And I'm like, yeah, that's not the one you should be worried about. <laughs> This one, she'll go for your ankles. Oh, that's true. <laughs> I've seen her do that. that. Yes, true. Yes. yes, she is an. She was an ankle baiter. She's fine now. But so funny. not anymore. That was just. That was in the very beginning. She was working yeah. through some. It was stuff. the beginning. We yeah. all have issues. Yeah. We give she you had, grace. She had some issues, mm -hmm. but she's good now. Yeah. Thank goodness. And she's a therapy dog. Yes. There you go. Cutest. Mm -hmm. Cutest girl. I don't know what I would have. I, you know, you wonder, you think, what would life have been <laughs> if I had not experienced this kind of devotion and love from this animal? She's just amazing. That's, that's I think, what the chihuahuas misunderstood. The, the loyalty to mm. one person is pretty mm. extraordinary. Oh, yeah, totally. When you lost standing ovation, did mm -hmm. she know, like, did, could she read your heart? Well, yes. She started... Um, sleeping cross body across my heart oh god oh. and what's so interesting is that is before i lost standing ovation um i had a friend who passed away who our last conversation was when she was coming to visit the farm and she loved standing ovation so much and ivy and the next day i go to say good morning to to ovi and there's a butterfly that starts playing. You put it on your yes, Insta stories. She was playing with starts it. playing with Ivy, but literally waiting for her and playing with her and around my horse. It was the wildest thing. So I mean, <sighs> and yeah. that's when your friend had no, the yeah, the day after my friend had passed. Oh my god! It was so wild. So I mean, you know, we can have a lot of conversation about do you believe? Do you not believe? But then when you start seeing things like that. How can you argue it? Yeah. Or you just have to go, wow. <laughs> Where, what do you do with that? I mean, how, I guess there's a logical reason of, oh, it was just an insect. Well, okay, maybe, but, but it, I, wasn't I looked, a, it wasn't a what, fly. No, it, it wasn't. wasn't a it, was, it wasn't. It was specifically a butterfly. Yeah. It was specifically a butterfly who literally was dancing around with Ivy for probably four minutes. So that, It was a very long time. Yeah, that was not like, it wasn't just like, something like a flying flit, in. Right. little flitter no. by. And then somebody said, have you heard the heart song, Dog and Butterfly? <gasps> and I put that over the video of the butterfly playing with her. And it's 
incredible. Perfect. I have to revisit that. I know I saw it when you posted it, but yeah. I need yes. to watch it again knowing the backstory. <laughs> I didn't know the backstory. We have, we have the video. Yes. Don't worry. Yes. Roll the video. Roll the video. We will. We're gonna, <laughs> we're it'll be rolling okay. right over us talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a talk show. I know. Right? Right. Roll, roll the video. The video. <laughs> We're learning. This yeah. is all new to us, but we're learning You're that doing you a can great do job. little tricks like that. Yeah. It's fun. You're doing a great job. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much for coming out. I loved to being see with us. you girls. We Absolutely. love talking animals with you. Yes, and Ivy Rose and RV Chihuahuas turned into um, RV Clan. Yep, RV Clan. We're all on a a, a message on Instagram. That's we're amazing. all connected. Isn't that funny? That's amazing. I so, love that. Yeah. And everybody's so, they just love their, their RV children so know, right? much. And it's so funny to see that video from the news clip and to be able to see her. Oh, in I can identify yeah. her in the pack. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. She looks even, well, maybe because I'm her mother now, I can, <laughs> <laughs> I can identify her. Yeah, no, I can. She looks different. She does. Oh, well, she, mm -hmm. held, she held her whole body so differently. She was so mm -hmm. tense and her eyes were so, you know, like a possum like Yeah. But even yeah. just her her facial features and her ears are are slightly different. So I'm wow. like, hmm. I know exactly who she is in that video. Yeah, I can wow. picture her. Yeah, she was a different girl with a fuller tummy That's and a skinnier right. body. Yeah. It was a different time. She said that was the old me. Now I'm the baby. Yes. Yeah, she's her breath probably smelled really bad back then. <laughs> oh, she's yawning. Oh, oh no. <laughs> I feel like that's where we have I to I love come you in. so much, but... Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you for being here. And thank you for your continued work. Thank oh. you for your support. Always. We really appreciate always, it. Always, always, always.